again from witchcraft. Lisa's behind the camera filming me. There she is. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> and I thought I would just show you just a really quick video for those of you who kind of like um, Victorian or kind of um, or enter music or keys or that type of thing. I thought I would just show you a really quick craft on that. Um, so I found this frame at Goodwill. It was like $1.99 or something. Didn't have a picture in it, but I thought the frame was beautiful. Um, and then I found some keys. I believe I found these at Michael's. There was a couple on a ring. Um, I got some scrapbooking paper. I'm not sure if I got this at Michael's or Hobby Lobby with music notes on it. And then I found some little keys that were also like in that dollar section by the checkout at Michael's. And then I just have some assorted ribbons. So this can be something you can put in your home for everyday use or just if you want to make it Christmassy, you can do that. You can do it the way I'm doing it or um, basically any way that you so choose that would match your home. So I am just going to uh, take the glass out of here for one brief second. There we go. Just push this out of the way. I'm gonna put my glasses on and make the little magnifiers here. Dollar store, thank you very much. Oh, that's what I'm doing. Okay, now I can see. So I'm just gonna take, um, actually, let me cut my paper first, I digress. Um, so I'm just gonna cut my paper to the size of my piece of glass. And I'm gonna be Mod Podging it right onto the front of the glass. Now you can do it differently if you want. You can leave the glass in, you can take the glass out, you can mod podge right onto this. If you want something more elegant for holiday, you can put some velvet on, some red velvet or black velvet or something um, and make it look all beautiful. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of mod podge on my glass here, just because it's a nice flat surface and it'll kind of beef up what I'm doing here a little bit. But like I said, do this your own way. I'm just here to give you some ideas. Okay, so let me just make sure this is right side up. Or at least make sure I put it in there right side up. <laughs> Slide this, it's a little slippery. Slip and slide here. Okay. Okay, and then just burnish it down a little bit. The glass is nice and sturdy, and um, the paper is nice and thick because it is scrapbooking paper. You can get that at Michael's, um, Hobby Lobby, Joanne Fabrics. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. They were four for a dollar, so it was a great deal. Okay, so I'm gonna put the glass back in there. Make sure that the words are right side up. I'm going to do this carefully without breaking the glass, especially because it's still wet. Cute, hey? It already looks like something. I haven't done anything yet. Okay, we're done, bye. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna put the back, the back back on, as compared to the front back on, or the back front on, there we go. Okay, so now we have that part so far. And now I am going to take um, some of my E6000 glue, this is permanent. This is really good for, for glass and metal and wood. Um, and it's real permanent after it cures. Um, it'll, you know, stay on forever and ever. So I'm gonna use this, and then I'm also gonna use my hot glue gun um, to get a quick fix, and then this will be uh, my more permanent fix. So I have to find what my touch points are. I just forgot, I just opened a new one, so I have to get that little piece of foil off. I like these little ones. I'm really enjoying these little little ones because whenever I get a big tube, it dries up on me. Did you know that you can 
open that up by taking that, that oh and putting it you know, like that somebody told me that i <laughs> thought that was just to store it yeah, somebody told me that that's how you too. store it i'll put that lid on for you so it doesn't look okay. out i learned something today <laughs> i did not know i knew that was there to store it i did not know you could actually open it with that though so thank you i'm just letting the hot glue cool down for a minute because it's so it doesn't run all over especially on my fingers And I'm just gonna hold this for a second and let it set up. It's sticking pretty good already because I tried to slide it over a little and it doesn't wanna go, so. Stay there. Sit, stay, as my mom would say. That's how she trained all of our dogs. Sit, stay, sit, stay. Anytime she didn't want something to move on her. Okay. I think that's going to stay. I'm going to... I always try to prop things when I don't want something to move for a few minutes. Whatever is nearby, I'll grab it and prop it. Okay, I'm just going to put this off to the side for just a minute. And I'm going to make a bow for the top. Originally, I was going to do the loop bow because it looks more vintage-y, Victorian-y, whatever, but I found so many cool bows that I wanted to use, and since there's not much to it, I kind of want to get some interest in the bows, so I decided to, to do a messy bow. So I found this ribbon with music notes on it and angels, so it could be considered Christmassy or could not, um, whatever you want it to be, I guess. I'm just gonna give this. Angels are universal. That's what I say. And heavenly too, mm -hmm. not just in the universe, in the heavens. But it matched the paper like identical, so I thought, okay. And I like the juxtaposition of something elegant with something rustic, so I am gonna put a little burlap in there just for grins. And I found this ribbon also at Michael's Guys and like that dollar thing, obviously it's way too white. So I just tea stained it. I just literally put it, made a cup of, not even a cup, a little bit of hot tea in the bottom of a cup and let it steep. And then I just put my ribbon in there and got it the color I needed it. I did the same thing with this, which was white. So wasn't the color I wanted, so I made it the color I wanted. And I do that quite a bit. So I have that. A little key. I have this one that is kind of that cork that I've used from the dollar store, and I'm just really putting in here to get a little bit of a darker color. And kind of like the uh, the ruler one here. We have some sheer. I like the different textures. I like thick and thin and different textures. Um, I think that's fun and interesting. Sometimes the bow makes it. Honestly, these I'm loving these messy bows now. You could put an, a bow on an apple and it would be adorable. Like, you know, I'm, being, <laughs> I'm being facetious, but I'm just saying, anything with these messy bows are just so cute. Because the bows in themselves are so cute, you don't have to do much or have much to make it be really adorable. Well, the more patterns and things you use on it too, it adds that interest. Right, and the textures and things, and mm -hmm. I love it. I like it a lot. I'm gonna put one more dark one in here. So that's the only dark one I had. That was hitting me in the face a little bit, so go okay and then I found I have this little schnibble of kind of a goldish copperish color left that I'm gonna use because why not otherwise it's just gonna go to waste so I usually find my thinnest 
least expensive piece of ribbon and just kind of tie it through the center. Some people I know use zip ties, some people use wires, some people use raffia, a string. You can use really anything through the middle here. I just will usually take a little piece of whatever I have handy and do it. Okay, and just pull it as tight as you can in the middle. Cinch it as tight as you can. There we go. And then you just have to play around with it a little bit to get it um, the way you want it. And get all your colors showing the way you want them. It's kind of why I angle them uh, different ways. So some are, some are going up, some are going down, some are going right, some are going left. And then I usually will end up giving this all a haircut at the very end. Off. I like to go back and sometimes I'll dovetail them, sometimes I will um, cut them with a pinking shears, sometimes I just angle them, just really depends on what I'm making and the feel that I want. Um, the nice thing is, is you don't need a lot of ribbon. If you're just getting started with crafting, you could literally go someplace where you can buy it by the yard and just get a yard of a bunch of different types rather than having to buy whole rolls. That can get pricey. I happen to have a lot of ribbon because I've been a crafter forever and I'm also a floral designer, so I have a lot left from Christmas wreaths or Christmas trees or displays that I've done and um, arrangements, whatever the case is. So I. I do use it up, even some weddings. Some of this ribbon like this, I think, was I used on corsages for a wedding once upon a time. Uh, the only one I'm dovetailing is the real wide stuff here because it is so thick that I want that one to have just a little bit of a texture. But the, the littler ones, I'm just angling. I think that's probably plenty. Almost done. This is just a quick, easy five or 10 minute craft, guys. And you can put anything in there. It doesn't have to be a key. It can be anything that's meaningful to you. Yeah. You know, an ornament, an initial, a, a cherub, a boy, you name it. Just any little doodad. So keep your eyes out to it. Like Christmas time or things for little charms, little ornaments, if they're flat on the back. Um, okay. I think we're just about done. Let's get a bow on. I don't know if this is dry yet. That's pretty good. I wouldn't move it too, too much yet. Um, you know, by tomorrow it's gonna to be perfectly dry, but right now the hot glue is dry, but the E6000 is still gonna be wet. So I am just going to add this to the top slash front. I kinda of want it a little across the top and maybe kind of coming down the front a little bit. I can't exactly see what I'm doing centered. Pretty good. Looks like a little a cute little mop head. I've always liked keys so I've always like always had a thing for old skeleton keys and things so hence all my key <laughs> all my keys I have. I actually have a drawer of keys that I just found one that was the right size and color for this frame. me and just fixing this so I can give you a final look-see. You know, you're looking at the back of a frame, right? Boring. 
and some of these are kind of like wired, the little angel stuff, so it was wired, so I'm just gonna kind of pull that out. I wanna make sure the keys are visible. And last but not least, I'm gonna put a little key on my key picture, because I think it'll be cute. And kind of one of these ones up here is a little bit of that coppery color. So Sometimes it's all in the details. Little embellishments will make or break a sale or a comment. So I am just going to glue that right up here. done. There we go guys. So next time you have an oddball frame with or without the glass, next time you have any kind of little tchotchke that um, means something to you or someone else, um, it's just as simple as that. A piece of paper, a frame, a tchotchke, some random ribbons, an embellishment if you have it, and you can make a really cute little gift or a piece of art out of it. So Keep that in mind. Please share and follow and like our page and stay tuned for next time to see which craft we make next. Bye for now.